would you please welcome the founder of Curry Media Productions, recently named Creator Success Coach at VidIQ, content entrepreneur and live streaming expert, Anthony Las Curry Santana. Welcome to the show, my friend. Uh, this this is long time waiting, long time waiting. <laughs> what an introduction, man. It's an honor to be here with you guys both. This, this is looking great, man. I'm excited. I'm excited. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it, man. Now, you and I, now listen, I've been following you for quite some time. And for those of you who are hidden under a rock and don't know who this gentleman is on the center of your screen, get ready because you're about to be inspired uh, to not just make a bunch of content, but to live a better life. And Mm -hmm. you and I connected a number of months ago, uh, Loss, and um, it was about Amazon, and so yeah. uh, you know we do. We spent uh, we spent some time together on a on a Zoom call, I believe it was, mm-hmm. and you just kind of rolled into your story. I mean, I was just I, I casually asked you a question. It was one of those conversations where I was like, "This conversation was a podcast, or it should have been broadcasted." <laughs> Uh, yeah. at, at that point. And, you know, of course I didn't record it or anything. I was like, yeah. boy, I hope if I ask this guy to be on my show that he's going to be on the show. And I would love to just, you know, have you share with our audience why you, um, are in the spot that you're in, because mm-hmm. you did not come yeah. to your faith and to the business that you're in in an ordinary way at all. And yeah. I'd love, I'd love for you to be able to share that with our audience. Yeah, I'd be I'd be definitely happy to share. So, um, let's see how far back do we want to go. So, uh, let's talk about back to the journey when this kind of all started four years ago. So, I was an insurance agent for nine years. Uh, you know, selling all kinds of insurance. So, I was in sales and marketing, um, but I had a passion for gaming. And you know, gaming was something that would always be my escape to get away just from the everyday kind of things that were happening. And I caught myself you know, playing the game just like, you know, most people would for tons of hours. And I would see other other gamers, you know, just like, man, there's people out there that's actually turning this passion that I have into something that's more meaningful. Um, but I just don't know what that journey looks like or how to even begin that process. So I did what anybody else would probably do and how most of us start our journey, which is just being curious, right? Um, and I began to just use what I call now my second mother, which is Google, um, to be able to like search everything that I possibly can uh, about how this worked. Um, and I stumbled upon creators that were before me on YouTube that were teaching, you know, live streaming on on Twitch um, and other platforms. And I decided to go the route of streaming on a platform created by Microsoft called Mixer. And uh, during that process, there wasn't no content created for that platform, so I decided to you know, like I love teaching and I love learning. So I was like, hey, as I go through this process, I'm just going to document what it is that I'm learning. Um, And I know that I can't depend on like Microsoft to promote me. They don't even know who I am. So how can I go ahead and get people to find me? So I leveraged YouTube and I started creating a weekly video on what I learned the prior week. Um, So through that journey, you know, I started to begin to educate uh, other, other people on streaming. Now, one thing that happened recently, um, which was about maybe I'd say now two years in the making was through this journey, was that I got saved through the Xbox. Um, Now, I can dive deeper um, in through through the story, but um, that was a big turning point for me uh, because it it showed me that there's a purpose why I was put into this role. There's a purpose why uh, this, this passion of mine really was drawn to me and really gave me the curiosity to go deeper with it. Um, not knowing what I, where I am now of like the influence that I would have and the people that would gravitate towards me, um, the opportunities and doors that would be opened up. Um, but again, just walking in faith um, and knowing that I'm just moving in the right direction, not on my behalf, but on his behalf, um, brought me here to where I am today. And now, you know, I full time, I spend my time just creating an online education business to try to help gamers turn what they love, which is gaming, into something more meaningful that can impact their families and impact the lives of others. So. Uh, feel free to, I can go deeper on any, any part of that, but that's kind of where that, I'm at man. right now. Okay. Now you, you just, you skated by the phrase, I got saved through the Xbox. <laughs> right. You skated yeah. right by that. Now, you yeah. know, l- listen, you know, we don't let you skate on this show. Yeah. You, it, 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 the, the seat's getting <laughs> a little warm, but like right. when you hear that, and when I heard that for the first time, I don't care if you're a person of faith or not. When you hear mm. that, you're like, wait a minute. Yeah. How does that happen? Yeah. Um, I, I, okay, we'll, we'll go there. So 
pretty much what ended up happening is that um, I was teaching uh, people how to stream on YouTube. And this pastor from South Carolina uh, reached out on one of my comments like, hey, I'm trying to stream. Uh, would you mind helping me out uh, getting things set up? So uh, I met with him, got things set up. He's like, yeah, I, I try to do uh, a gaming stream, but I do a Bible study every Friday if you want to join. Now, in the beginning, you know, I'm, I'm like, this is awkward. Um, I'm not interested. And I just kind of put it off for a while. So, you know, he would invite me to like play the game together. We would play sports games. And every time that we would be connected together, um, he would always try to take the conversation from like the natural to like the spiritual. And it would always take me back. Mm -hmm. um, and I would just put him off. And he would every time just invite me, hey, you know, on Friday nights at 9 p.m. on the Xbox, um, you know, we do a Bible study. And then after the Bible study, we get together and we game. Um, and I remember for the longest time I put him off and, um, I would tell my uh, wife now, Shauna, uh, she was like, you know, why don't you just join one time just so that he can get off of, off of you and stop inviting you. I was like, that's a great <laughs> idea. You know, I should, I should probably just join this time and then I never have to come back again. Um, so it doesn't remember, work that way, does it? Yeah, it doesn't work that way. It didn't work that way. And, and what happened next really was unexpected for me because, um, that was the that was the day that a lot of things in my life changed. Um, and so I joined and, you know, it's not on camera. It's just you're just in a chat that's just voice only on the on the Xbox. Mm -hmm. um, so they can't see what it is that you're doing. So there's about maybe nine or 10 of us in there. And I'm just playing the game just like, OK, I'm here. He sees my name in the in the chat. So that's 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 all. Um, so I remember for like the longest way, 10, 15 minutes, I'm just ignoring the conversation. And then you know, they get to the end and they're just like wrapping up. Um, and I remember they were like, hey, this is a moment um, where we want to do an invitation and invite you guys that, you know, uh, if you believe that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, you know, all you have to do is declare that and you'll be saved. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember in that moment, everything froze for me, right? Mm -hmm. My attention mm -hmm. to that voice instantly was gravitated to it, right? I was getting goosebumps on my hands. I, I, I pretty much froze. Um, and I remember like, turning uh, to Sean and just looking at her. And, you know, they were like, all you have to do is say yes. And I could feel myself wanting to yell, but holding it in. I'm like, what is going on? Like, I'm losing control of myself and what it is that I want to say. And, um, and then I literally just opened up and said, me. Um, and I remember in that moment, like, it felt, you know, I, I, didn't, I didn't have this pressure. I didn't know that I had this pressure, but I felt so light after saying that. Um, mm -hmm. I began to cry. My, I had goosebumps. I just didn't know what what it was to expect. And in that moment, you know, they just all came together. And even though it wasn't, even though it was, it was a, like a virtual kind of engagement, um, it really felt like they were all there. Right. Um, so instantly right away, uh, Pastor Danny uh, reached out and it's like, Hey, I wanted to send you, I want to send you a Bible and I want to send you a, a first steps book. And I want to mentor you for the next 10 weeks um, just to be able to help you. So, and you know, for maybe like a month, I just put them off because it was still new. I'm like, I don't know what happened there. I'm not really too sure what what just what that was about. Did I black out? Um, what happened? Yeah, I'm concerned, right? I'm concerned. So, um, so finally, you know, uh, again, he was never forceful, but just continued to, you know, be that that steward of just like, hey, I'm just I'm just trying to be your friend, right? I'm not trying to mm -hmm. pressure you, but I do want to mentor you. And um, I finally took him on and said, okay, do the same thing, right? Ten weeks, I'm in and out. Um, and 10 weeks came in, man. And, and to this day, you know, he baptized me. Uh, he came down, flew down, baptized me. Um, and then literally, literally, uh, maybe a few months after that, uh, Shauna came to me. She's like, I want to join you in Bible study. And it, it blew my mind because the biggest thing that he said to me was like, you and Shauna are unevenly yoked. You know, she's not in faith. You're in faith. That's a problem. Um, but don't force her to do mm. what it is that you want. Just be you. Do you and let her see the change in you. Mm -hmm. And I did that. And then now here we are and we got married and, you know, everything's just been blossoming from there. So it's, that's definitely the, the story for me, but um, never did I think that it was going to happen that way. So now I feel like a purpose to uh, reach out to people in that space, in that gaming community and maybe be that light where there's so much darkness. Yeah. Wow. And I bet yeah. that, are you going to keep that specific Xbox like, forever like even if you oh I, I have it oh I, ha oh I have it it's, it's there oh trust me I, I, oh, I, I have it and, and, and so, so did that that day is just like so ingrained in my mind um, that even just speaking to you guys right now like I get, I'm getting hot like I just reliving yeah. it you know to realize yeah. that it's just like 
it, it's just crazy the way the world, the way things just happen and just the journey that you're able to go on in just a blink of an eye. So, yeah. Well, and it, it to me, what it also just shows is, is the power of connection. It's the power of what live streaming <clears throat> can do, right? Yeah. I mean, these are people in different places. It's not like he was down the street from you or you no. had to go to a meeting. And, and so if you've got an open mind and are willing to learn, you know, I think that that's the thing. And, you know, and love what you're starting to do now, right? You're teaching others. You're helping, as Chris and I like to say, helping them solve the problems, mm-hmm. making them understand there's more to, you know, life maybe than just playing a game. Right. right? And that there's opportunities where you can actually make positive changes in, in people's mm-hmm. lives. Yeah, I agree 100%. It's 100%. an incredible story. And, um, you know, I'm, you know, thank you for... Uh, for sharing that. And I think, sure. you know, and we talked a little bit about this as well. Like typically our audience, the people that, that, that tune into our show, that listen to the podcast, the people that we talk to, they're entrepreneurs, podcasters, live streamers. Um, and they're, they have a certain, not stereotype, but maybe misconception about the gaming community. And that, you know, whether they think it's just for kids or they don't understand Twitch right. or maybe they're just not interested and they're not passionate in playing PS5, uh, you know, or, or doing, you know, playing video games or, or whatever. Like that was something where, the, you know, they put quarters in in the arcade in 1984 or whatever. <laughs> it, and so yeah. they, they don't either they don't understand it, don't have a passion for it, or they think it's not for them. And so they don't. They don't lean into the fact that there are a ton of really great content entrepreneurs like yourself <laughs> that sits in the middle of this Venn diagram of the gaming community and the entrepreneur podcast community. <laughs> there you sit in the middle of this. And um, so I, one of, uh, I'll share this with you. One of my <laughs> biggest clients that I have, he's a, uh, he's a keynote speaker and he's a, he's a six figure um, keynote speaker. He goes to Abu Dhabi. He goes all over the world and he speaks wow. in front of thousands and tens of thousands of, of, of people. And he's not a very religious man, let's say. He's not mm-hmm. a, typically a man of faith. But mm-hmm. he tells me that he, not only every Sunday, but weekly, uh, he studies pastors and preachers wow. mm. because he learns so much from them. And he will, he'll call mm-hmm. me because he, because he knows you know, kind of what, what, where I stand. And so he's like, Hey, you know, I, 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 watch this video from Andy Stanley, you know, or watch this video from Craig Rochelle. You see how he leans into this and you see how he says this. And I think there's so much that we can learn Mm -hmm. from other industries, from other people that are doing this, right. That are, that are like, I I look at your background. I look at your setup. I look at the, the road mic that you've got. And I, and, Mm -hmm. and then I start watching your videos and it it doesn't matter if you're talking about how to set up your account on kick or, (laughs) you know, how to, how to set up your microphone. I'm like, how do I do that? Mm. How does he do this? How does Mm. he do that? And so if you're speaking to our audience, how do you, where do they start? In, in sort of getting and, and garnering influence from this community that, that you're, you're kind of sitting in the center of? Yeah, um, that's a great question. And um, I love the idea of just, you know, studying outside of your space um, because I feel like we need to be a student for life, right? Um, there, there's not a moment where you become a master. Um, there's always something that you can improve on, someone that you can learn from. Um, and that kind of brings me to the idea there where it's like, we got to take the idea of that, I'm a gamer, I'm a business person, right? And and just take that out of the equation for a moment and look at look at every opportunity as live streaming as we both share the same goal. Whether you're a business, whether you're gaming, we all want to build connections, relationships, and build a community, right? Um, and one of the biggest things that gamers do so well is that they do foster massive communities, right? They do know how to be transparent, how to be vulnerable, how to be able to connect and relate. And I think that it, when you look at it that way, our goal is just to seek attention, right? And the way you seek attention is to be where those people are. Um, so that's why I'm always a big component of not like not using a platform just because it doesn't make sense, right? Because everyone has different kind of interests. And there's where I may enjoy gaming, I may enjoy sports, I may enjoy politics. Um, but we'll never get to know what somebody truly is interested in if we don't have that conversation. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you're not on that platform, you're not going to be able to ever meet those kind of people. So 
Um, I'm constantly always learning from other people, right? And I look at how are you producing your show? What are you doing? Because at the end of the day, even if it's not being done in the gaming space, it can be something that could be in, introduced and I am could be innovating in a space where that is so used to being inside of a same box and vice versa, right? People who are doing podcasts, people who are doing live stream, you can be caught up in this box of doing the same thing that everybody else is doing because you're not willing to look outside of that space because you feel that, oh, it's gaming. I'm not a gamer, but let's look at some of the things that they do to build engagement. How are they getting the yes. chat moving, right? How are they getting people talking? How do they get people to, like, when they go offline to just seek them on social media and want to comment and follow them everywhere, right? It's this tribe that they build, right? They have these creeds. They have these creation stories that, you know, a lot of times when we're doing business, we tend to not show that side of us because we feel we need to be so polished, right? And that's the difference that I feel that can be the gap. I want gamers to understand how to turn gaming into a business. And I want business people to understand how it is okay to be human, right? Mm. And be yourself. Um, and I feel like if, if, a, if somebody's trying to get into the space and try to learn, um, I think the biggest thing is like gamers are just themselves. And if, and if podcasts and business people can just be more transparent and be themselves and be that person where it's like, hey, when you go to work, you're this person. But when you're with your friends, you're this person. Cool. You can control how you respond and how you engage with those kind of people. But people need to know your failures, your flaws, the things that you're struggling with, your challenges. And gamers do that very well because they're just being them. Um, so I, I hope that answers the question, but I just yeah. think that there's the, the, the gap of just humanizing connections and focusing more on relationships as far as, rather than just thinking about this platform's not for me. I think w what I really love that you hit on there is the fact that, you know, and you, and you think about it, when you're playing a video game, it's mm -hmm. kind of like you're, you've let yourself go. You are yourself. And so it's kind of hard for you to act one way and jump on mm -hmm. a video game and then it's like, okay, now I'm no, I mean, now maybe you get into character or something if you're yeah, playing yeah, yeah. a certain game. <laughs> but if, especially if you're like really focused and intent, right? It's like, why not be that way on other things? And I also love how you bring up, because you hear this so much where people talk about, as an example, like these Zooms, like, how do we get more mm. engagement on live streams? Well, go look at what gamers are doing mm. to get engagement, right? I, I think that is a great, great idea because, yeah, there's, there's always new things coming out, right? There's, mm -hmm. uh, you know, these different things you can do to get people to vote while they're, you know, engaging. But what else can you do to make it more interactive? And I think, you know, you kind of hit on it earlier, I think before the show, you know, talking about what AI is doing, right? AI mm -hmm. is creating all these new things and even things like the, the Oculus. And, you know, we're all very intrigued and excited to see what Apple's going to do with the, um, the, 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 was it the, the Vision Pro and how that's going to kind of like change things because it reminds me of some of those movies we say, right? Like you're going to have all these screens moving all over. And <laughs> I, I'm excited yeah. about it. But like Chris said, we're, hopefully somebody will gift us one. Yeah. <laughs> Put it out there. So I love it. So what are, yeah. um, in speaking about this, mm -hmm. what are some of like the effective sort of strategies for someone that you see like from a, you know, it, a lot of gamers are doing some creative and innovative mm -hmm. things. What are some things that, you know, maybe some podcasters and live streamers, and, you know, like a lot of, a lot of podcasters, they, they were, they've been podcasting when, when the only thing you could do with a podcast was create an audio version that was on an iPod, right? Yeah. And so they were really reticent to start doing video, right? So what are some of the, the, the innovative things that maybe the gaming community are doing that, you know, we might want to be thinking about, you know, dipping our toes in? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Um, this is what I believe, and this is just from my findings and kind of just spending time in, in both spaces, is that as a podcaster and as a business, um, there's what I call three buckets, right, um, that you can play in. And, you know, as a podcaster, as a business person, most of the time, most people, I'm not going to say everyone, but most people play in one bucket and that's the sales bucket, right? Every type of engagement, every type of live stream is driven and focused around a single goal of generating sales. There's nothing wrong with that, right? And the difference between gamers is that they play in the other two buckets and they actually miss out on the sales bucket. They don't play in the sales bucket. Um, so the other two buckets is a discovery bucket and a, and a community bucket, right? So mm. they focus on creating a community and creating content 
that's focused on being found, right? With the only goal is to expose themselves to a new audience and just to put their best foot forward as like, hey, this is just a first introduction. I just want to get found, right? And then the other second bucket that they play in is community, right? Where these are pieces of content that they're not more or less focused on getting views, but the people that they've already pulled in from the discoverable content, they're using that to go deeper. This is where they become vulnerable. This is where they share stories. This is where they go deeper. Um, and and where they miss the, the mark is to take that person that's now invested, has that no like, and trust factor and taking them over to kind of like that sales, right? What can you offer them? How can you take them further, right? Whether that be subscribing to you for a membership, not buying your merch. Um, and I think, again, the the flip is... is, is um, flip on the podcast side where it's like, we're so business and sales driven yeah. um, that we forget to say like, hey, I'm okay with making this piece of content that's not going to get seen by a lot of people, but it's going to get people to understand me more as a human and know who I am, right? So making right. those kind of videos where it's like, I don't need to be in my studio. I can grab my phone and be very authentic and be very transparent and just share like what it is that I'm doing. Um, because one of the things that gamer do, gamers do is that they include their audience in the things that they're building, right? What do you guys want to yeah. see this show? Uh, what do you guys, what do you guys think they, about yeah. this? What do you guys think that we should do about this? And I think that the, as businesses, we sometimes forget that the audience is what drives us, right? Yeah. There, we need them more than they need us. Um, mm. and when we realize that we'll start asking for their input. And because when the audience feels inclusive and they feel like they're a part of your journey, not only do you get more referral and them talking about you to other people, which is great for business, right? But you start building this relationship with them that they'll come to you, right? I think there's a great book by Pat Flynn, right? Super fans, right? You don't need a thousand yeah. people. So if you put that into perspective and you're like, I don't need a thousand people, then you would slow down. And instead of doing five sales videos every week, you would do for a month and you would focus more on discovery and community because that's going to ultimately naturally drive more sales. So um, I know I went into like a deep end there, but it's like, I no, think that's great. the missing pieces. And I think that's where I'm trying yeah. to bring the gap. Gamers, let's find something for you to make money on so we can make this sustainable. And then business and podcast, so let's, let's slow down the sales and focus more on relationship building. That way you can make more sales. We'll get right back to the show, but first I wanted to tell you about Social Media News Live. Jeff C. and his amazing guests will keep you up to date on what's happening in this entire changing world of social media. They talk with industry experts and innovators and creators about the latest social media news, tips and tactics, and they broadcast live so you can ask the questions that matter most to you and your business. Jim and I love this show and we know that you will too. Head over to socialmedianewslive.com. Hey, tell them dealcaster sent you now back to the show this yeah, is that, that's the it's like the perfect yeah. answer and uh yeah. nancy uh thank you you've uh, you've unbroken the chat uh for it, you <laughs> know it's like uh finally we we're uh it looks like uh ecam is is cooperating with us so nancy uh we love this guy too um you know can't help but get fired up um for sure about this but yeah it's it's crazy it it's like you're so right is that there's so many people mm. that are so buttoned up business wise that they <laughs> want to get you in the funnel so bad. And I think a lot of people can smell it. And, yeah, mm -hmm. um, then there are so many people that are not even worried about the funnel. They're not even worried about <laughs> right? that. And it's like, Hey, tap, tap, tap. There's some, there's some money hiding under your bed here. Let's, yep. let's, let's pull it out. You know, mm -hmm. you've, um, and so the, it's, it's really great that you've got this, uh, almost 10,000 foot view of both yeah. of those. Uh, and so you can be able to kind of say, Hey, you're not doing enough of this. Um, right. so, and that's why companies like fit IQ is are hiring you for a uh, streaming coach. Right. It's amazing. Exactly. Yeah, and, and, and it really too, Chris, this even reminds me of the conversation we had with Tim Hughes, right? This is more about social selling. You're not trying to mm -hmm. sell people. You're, you're getting to know, like, and trust them and vice versa. And then they want to do business with you. And I, I think it's it's interesting, the comment you made earlier, and, and I want to maybe dive a little bit more into this, is sure. you talk about how these businesses, and Chris sees it a lot, it's like, how do I get a sponsor and how do I get more downloads for my mm. podcast? It's like, well, how about putting something out there first that people like? Mm. And I guess maybe on the flip side, the gamers are like, hey, I just want to play my game. And what, what you mean right. I can make money off of this? Mm, right. So, so I... I how are you, how do you see 
uh, what's kind of your thoughts on how you're going to drive maybe those those gamers to think a little bit more business like? Yeah, um, it's definitely been the biggest challenge that I've kind of encountered. Um, something because like the business and marketing side is something that like comes natural to me. Um, so it's almost like it's common knowledge, but it's it's very difficult to transition somebody's mind. Um, especially I remember back for me back in 2014 when you know like even though my dad grew up as like an entrepreneur, you know, building for himself, you know, since I was a little kid, just you know, doing all kind of odd jobs. You know, I still got caught up into, you know, working a job and understanding like that's how you produce and make a living, right? Like if you were to make money on the side or something, it was just always going to be a side hustle, right? It wasn't something that you would be like, this is how I make my living. It's not at a job. Um, and it's not, that's not the mindset. So, you know, for me, gamers are in that realm, right? Where it's like growing up, your parents, you know, especially for the audience that I'm serving, which is like, a lot of it, which is crazy to think, but it's about 20, 24 to 35 year olds, right? So like kind of in my range. So they grew up on parents telling them that, you know, gaming is is, is a game, right? Like you need to get off that game. You need to go do something with your life. Like yeah, you can't let that job. consume you, right? Go get a job. Um, so I believe that that's like a, a trauma that gamers have um, mm. where they either believe that it's not possible or they don't believe in themselves enough to think that they can do it. Um, so that's been the challenge to get them to change, to change their mindset on that. Um, I feel that that, that conversation for me, it's very few, uh, that I have just based on a certain percentage of people that actually are like already thinking that, um, for me, the stage that I'm at right now with gamers is first to get them to believe that like what they're doing, there's a community around the thing that they love. Right. So first my mission right now is to convince them that what they're passionate about it's worth the chasing and that there are other people that have the same passion and that will support their mission and help them grow and reach that, right? So I'm in the belief stage of them right now, right? Mindset, uh, adoption of what's possible before I could even have that conversation of like marketing and business. So um, I do believe that there are uh, certain gaming content creators that are out there now that have been doing it for a while that are full time, um, but are leaving money on the table. Um, that I feel those would be uh, creators that would be better to have a conversation with about like, okay, hey, look, you're generating money, you have brands supporting you, um, you know, you think, but let's think about other things you can do to be able to leverage because I feel that the best person to be able to educate and train and help people are the people that are doing it day in and day out and they have had success in the past, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I want to get gaming content creators um, to understand, like, if you're having success, like, I want you to share that story. I mm -hmm. want you to share because the more that people can hear, like, oh, it's not the top 1% that are making it. There's a bottom pool of people that are making it that are not being heard because they have no visibility. Or, you know, I mean, how many people in the NBA um, are, you don't even know some of the players, but they made it to the NBA, the top of the top of the top, right? But yeah. you don't even know their name. I know when I watch them, I'm like, who is that? Uh, okay, so, but... You don't know their story. Um, and I believe stories share such a powerful impact on people that if you were able to hear how somebody came through their like struggles, their discipline, the sacrifices, the thing they had to do, um, how did you make it here? How did you foster this community? Um, I think once more those stories are being shared, the belief will get stronger and there will be more of a curiosity factor of like, hey, there's a possibility. So for me, as I'm educating the gamers on developing their mindset, on the back end, I'm building the things that later they're going to need. So I'm trying to be ahead of the curve um, by knowing that what I'm building now may not reach the amount of people that I want, but I do want this customer journey of like, once they're ready, it's there. Um, but um, I know the, the question, I went to deep end. I always do that all the time, but... No, man, um, that's cool. Go deep, it, man. Go deep. <laughs> it's like, so so that's kind of like, that's the, 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 big, the biggest thing for me of like, that's where I'm trying to get them to be um, and to understand that. And I believe that when like you're talking about like even podcasters that want to like get sponsorship and get brand deals, like one thing that stuck, stuck true to me and I, I can't remember who said it, um, but it was like, you need to become the honey, not the bees, right? Become mm. the honey that the brands and companies want to come and be attracted to because of what you're building. Um, and I believe that that's like the biggest thing. Gamers build the audience, but they have, they don't know what to do with the audience. Um, mm. So they have the attention, they have the eyes and brands want that attention. But, you know, 
inexperienced. They don't know how to, they don't know how to, they don't know how to, how to position themselves, how to attract those, how to have those conversations. So then they become unmarketable in the eyes of a company because they're like, oh, I don't really like the way you're presenting it. I don't like the things you like, you know, it's, there's no structure. So um, I feel that there's so much that can be learned from both sides where it's like, if we as business people and brands stop focusing so much on like how much numbers we get, how much sales we get this week, like it's important. We want the business to thrive. We want to be able to pay payroll. We want to be able to do so much stuff. But if we were to dedicate more time onto fostering relationships and creating content that's just more about how can I add more value to somebody's life? How can I position what I do here in my company as a solution to the problem that they have, right? As opposed to me selling them, let me get them to think that, hey, my product is the solution. I don't have to sell you, right? Because I understand you so much deeply as a human, beyond just demographics, because I think that's where everybody likes to be, demographics, is going to psychographics, right? What does this person like to do offline? What is this person interested in? What are the hobbies? And the more you get to learn that audience, and that's kind of where I'm at in, in my space, right? I'm just so deeply invested into learning so much about who it is that I'm trying to serve so that I can better position the things that I say, the things that I do, and the things that I sell in a better picture frame that it resonates with them. And they come to the aha moment like, Oh wow, this is for me. Like this guy understands me. Yes, because I'm I'm under, I'm trying to understand you. Um, and I think that the minute that a creator, regardless if you're in the gaming or a podcaster, you take yourself out of the equation. It's not about you. The minute you can get out of that 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 scenario of like thinking like, oh, it's about me, and you start putting all your energy on the other person on the other side, one person, not many, one person. Who's that one individual that I'm trying to solve that my business would do the best for? What game am I trying to create? What kind of content am I trying to create? It's going to serve and make that person either be inspired, entertained, or educated in whatever that I'm doing. So I just think that it, at the end of the day, it all comes down to relationships. And the moment we focus on other people, um, I think Jim Rohn said it the best, right? The, 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 the more you help others, the, the, the more you get back in return, right? Um, mm -hmm. And we just got to serve. Um, and I don't think I don't think we do enough of that. We just think about our bank accounts, uh, how many followers, how many subscribers I'm going to get. Um, and I was like that in the beginning. I'm not going to lie. Um, sure. That's probably something that I was super attached to numbers. Um, now, I look at the data to understand if what I'm creating is resonating so I can better improve and make better decisions. But ultimately, the moment I stopped worrying about like, oh, if I upload this video, it's not getting that many views. Yeah. Um, I started being more free in my content and I started feeling being more personal, mm -hmm. more authentic, more transparent. Um, and there was a deeper connection when I stopped and slowed down. It's like, man, I'm creating three videos a week, but the minute I create a video, I just move on to the next. I'm never going back and looking at those comments and engaging with people. Like people are taking their time to write something that in, that was impacting them through the content. So take that conversation deeper. And I think we always keep it surface level. I've now started like DMing people when they message me. Now I'll respond back to the comment, but I take it to the DM. Hey man, where are you at in your journey? How can I help you? Because mm. I'm now so invested in trying to learn who that person is mm. so that way I can better serve them because I don't want to serve everyone. I just want to serve the right one. Um, so it's just like, it, it, it's, it's a journey and it's a challenge. And I, I don't so say I've got it all figured out, but um, I think that's where our focus needs to be because we're so focused on like these virtual connections that it's like, yeah. we still need to be personable. You yeah. know, and it, it wow. doesn't matter if you're a gamer it does, or an author right. or a keynote speaker or a podcaster or a live streamer. If you're listening, if you're watching, those are key elements to anything <laughs> is yep. listening to the people that you're serving. Yep. You know, speak and then shut up and listen, mm -hmm. right? Because I mean, you, I mean, I can't, you know, when, you must have taken hours and hours and hours to listen to uh, to your uh, you you have a you have a keen um, idea um, down radar of the person that you're speaking to, like, and I think that is that is so lost now in in mm. so many industries is they just they're firing up the mic and they forget about who they're serving, they forget yeah. about the content, they forget about the medicine that they can deliver to someone to make them better. And you have this keen idea. And, I, and, and again, I mean, I keep saying it. It's like, ladies and gentlemen, we can learn from anyone in any industry. And we're, we're dropping, right. you know, people's names like Jim Rohn and yeah. Pat Flynn and, yeah. uh, you know, all of these others. Not one gamer has been mentioned other, right. than, uh, other than Las Curry. And uh, right. so uh, we've got some other comments here. Cyrus Webb, thank you again for, uh, for joining the show. 
Um, yeah. great tips, become the honey, not the bees. Yeah. Yep. I wonder who I, I I've heard that before too. I'm trying yeah, to remember who it. said that. It, to me, it seems like it's less Brown, but I'm not, I'm not a hundred percent. I'm not a hundred percent sure, but I do believe that um, those are people I listen to a lot. So it just gets caught up in the, caught up in the winds. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. That's so, it. Nancy Fenner. Yes. Yeah. Uh, very, very inspirational. I'm just, uh, I'm getting fired up and I'm, I'm, I'm so glad up. that you're, uh, that you're here with us. So I, I wanted to take this uh, in a, in another direction sure. and, um, because you're so focused on who you're serving right now, mm -hmm. what are your opinions on the future? We mentioned AI, right? And, mm -hmm. uh, our friend, uh, Jeff C, who's going to be on, uh, next week on, on, uh, on dealcasters. When you bring up AI for him, um, as it relates to, um, live streaming and what we do. Of course, mm -hmm. there are AI things. There's deep fakes and all kinds of things. Right. Like, look, I can actually go live and not me, you know, be there. But I think there are things like Nancy's in the house, Cyrus Webb's in the house, James mm -hmm. Hicks. Like we have inside jokes with, with, with some of these people. I know Cyrus mm -hmm. is another Amazon uh, influencer. He has, mm -hmm. you know, he's, he has other people that he interviews that are book authors and like, wow. this is, this is a community that you can build. Mm -hmm. And I don't think yet, Unless, um, unless last year you're, you're aware that yeah. there's any uh, artificial community intelligence uh, being being built uh, for for live streaming, but Not what in your opinion is is the future? Uh, where is this going? Yeah, sure. I think that's a that's a great question, um, and one that I think about uh, pretty frequently. Um, and something I can share here is just like, you know, there is positive positive things with AI, um, and I believe that anything that's going to allow you to be more efficient. Uh, to be able to allow you to get your message out faster um, is is a positive thing, right? I think that every tool and technology that allows us to do that um, is great. The one mm -hmm. thing that that I'm against is when you use leverage those tools and you remove uh, the human connection from it. And mm -hmm. that that's that's where I believe it's it's the biggest driving factor. Um, where it's like, yes, I can use this tool, and I spend every day five to 10 minutes trying to learn AI. Why? Because we still have to adapt. We have to understand where these tools are going um, and how to be able to leverage them. But again, for me, at the core, it's always going to be the human, right? How mm -hmm. can I use this tool to better understand? So like the way I leverage AI, um, and there's an AI that I, that I utilize pretty frequently, it's called harpa.ai, uh, uh, um, is to understand more by my audience, right? Because I don't want to skim mm. through uh, thousands of comments, but that tool allows me to pull up a video, scan the comments, and tell me who's the audience in this video, right? So mm. when you can leverage AI for research, it's, be mm. it's like beautiful. Um, so like that's how I'm leveraging it, right? And that's how I'll continue to leverage it until things change. Um, but I am a super believer in AI because it's, it makes you more efficient. It makes you be a one-person creator, which I've been for a long time. I think I now have a small team, but um, it allows me to do tasks that before would take me hours and hours and hours, and it speeds up my process of collecting data to come to a kind of conclusion um, of understanding like, oh, wow, like this kind of video this pe these are the people that are watching this, right? They're, they're this kind of people. They're, they enjoy these kind of things. These are the common words that are being said by hundreds of comments, right? This is the same question that's being asked by hundreds of comments. Cool. So now I know that I can leverage that conversation because it's something that resonates with so many people that now when I speak it, what, what happens? They know, like, and trust me. Why? Because I'm listening and I'm addressing their problems. So, so for me, like I said, um, I'm still new into the whole AI space, but I do dedicate five to 10 minutes every day to learn it. Um, I believe it is positive, but the minute you use it to kind of eliminate like having the AI work for you to sell your product or do the things that require like that personal heart emotion, even though AI can do empathy, tell me in a story and it can do so many things. Um, it doesn't, it doesn't beat this here when you can see my expression, we can see my eyes, you That's can right. see me raise my voice and lower my voice and lean into you and talk to you and lean back. Um, so, so for me, that's where I stand with AI. Um, I use it to understand better who it is I'm trying to serve and what I'm trying to create. Um, but then I try to just still be the person that's like the liaison that's in front of it, um, still doing the hand-to-hand -hand combat. 
We're going to get right back to the show, but first I've got to share this genius tool with you. It's called the PlexiCam. You can say goodbye to awkward eye contact struggles on your live streams, your presentations, your Zoom calls. This PlexiCam lets you maintain eye contact effortlessly by simply attaching to your monitor. It's compatible with webcams, phone, DSLRs, you name it. It's like having a personal eye contact assistant. Jim and I both love ours. So level up your eye contact today. Check out the links below. Now back to the show. Love it. Love it. And I think that's so important, right? Because I feel like sometimes, and and I think that even when we see these people, whether on the podcast side, whether on the gaming side, Mm -hmm. they're looking for the easy button. So now everybody's like, oh, I got this AI thing. And I just, work for five minutes and uh, you know money's going to be falling from the sky, dollar right. bills everywhere. And that's yeah. not the case, right? We've got to actually do the work, right? It, Lord, I love how you said earlier in the show, right? We have to be constantly learning, right? <laughs> Chris and I don't stop learning. We're, we're not like, we've arrived. We can stop learning. Yeah. It, it's like, <laughs> what else is new, right? We were talking before the show. Oh, there's stuff you can use on a PC. There's stuff you can use on a Mac. Mm-hmm. And and you may not be strong in one of those areas. Like, so how do I get better so I can help others? Mm-hmm. I agree 100%. We all have our own walks of life and our own experiences that we kind of go through. Um, and I don't I don't believe either Jim, nor Chris, nor I uh, have walked the same path. So, um, you know, I've seen a different tree than you have, Jim. And, and mm-hmm. so have you, Chris, right? So at the end of the day, um, it's those stories and those experiences that it may not be a tech education, but a life education is just as strong. I mean, like books are the best teacher, right? I think I have I have these two books here, um, which is one is uh, story worthy, and the other mm. one is uh, the the coaching habit, right? Um, less, ask more, and change and change the way you lead forever, right? So I think that we can learn so much from people in the past, um, and I believe that we're so focused on the future that we forget like the experiences that are left behind um, yeah. and what we can learn so much from because the way we respond as humans is still the same. Um, and what we, what we kind of relate to is still the same. So we like to be heard, right? People like the way we speak and the things that we inspired, we, we're all chasing growth. Um, and I believe that, you know, there's so much to learn. Like, like I said, so I'm hundred percent glad that you guys are on the same page of this, like forever being a student to the game and, and understanding that it's, it's just a lifelong journey. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah. I, I'm a big believer and I know Chris has heard me say this before that once we stop learning, we start to die. Yep. And that's why for me, I'm almost afraid to retire because like, then what yeah. am I going to do, right? Unless I'm going to go <laughs> learn something else like, you know, yeah. how to uh, mow my yard or, or something like that. But uh, mm. so, you so, uh, you know, we should add this to the carousel, but you mentioned Storyworthy. What, what was the other mm-hmm. book? Uh, the other book is called The Coaching Habit. The Coaching Habit. Okay. Yeah. So I'm, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work on that while Chris, uh, yeah. Chris talks to you some more here. <laughs> I'm going to book st- yeah. So, um, one of the things that whenever I'm working with podcasters mm-hmm. and live streamers, we talk about niche, we talk about niching down, mm-hmm. we talk about how important it is to not try to be everything to everyone. Um, mm-hmm. but to really, in you, you talked about the super fan concept with, uh, with mm-hmm. Pat Flynn and everything when mm-hmm. you're working with, uh, with, with your community, um, how important is it to, to be niche? It's extremely important. Um, and especially in the early stages, right? Um, because I I believe that over time you do have the opportunity to be able to expand and broaden. Um, and I believe that most people, especially gamers or even business people do it vice versa. They try to go broad and as they go broad, they try to shrink it up. Um, and it should be the other way around, right? How can I find the small pool of people that are interested in what I'm interested in? And then from those small pool of people, whether it be two, three, four, five, I say this all the time to gamers, like don't discredit the two viewers that you have on your stream, right? Get yeah. to understand why are these two people showing up every time you go live? Why are, why are these two people, the ones that are liking your Instagram, liking your Twitter, like ask them those questions. And I, and I believe that we discredit that because it's not an in-person. And I, and I use this analogy every time. Like if I put 20 people in here, I'm, I'm, it's, it's, it, we're going to be tight. Um, and I think we forget that like 20 people, you know, um, and I believe it was Doc Rock and I can't, I can't remember exactly how he, how he positioned it. Um, but it was just like, the level of people that you have, like if you have 20 people, that's like a small cafe and it Mm. just increases from there. So 
it's it's just like once you understand that like starting small and figuring out what is that problem that that person's having it naturally allows you to expand right um so i always i always say when i'm talking to gamers just like let's let's first uncover these things right the first thing that i said before you can know what you do you need to know why you do it right mm. um so and and you, in order for you to know why you do it you need to know who that person is that you're doing it for um, so that's where like the first kind of conversation, whenever I do a coaching call, that's like the, the first thing that I ask is like, oh, you know, I love, I love, I love to game. I like to just, okay, why? Right. And I, and I dive deep on that. Why? Right. Because the minute you start uncovering, it goes from just like a gaming, uh, because I just enjoy it. Or it's like, no, I like, I, I want to turn it into something because I want to support my family and have control over my life. Okay. Now mm. we're getting somewhere. Right. So, go. so how can we, how can we leverage that? So sometimes, and I think you think about this, right? Companies use uh, MVP product, right? Small test pool, right? Beta groups. Why, why, why do companies do beta groups, right? And do a small group before they launch it out to bigger people? Because they need to understand the flaws. They need to understand the struggles, the pain points, what's happening here. Because if 10 people are having the struggle, then 100 people will have those same struggles. Mm. Um, so, so that's where I always wow. say, like, start small and then branch out, right? Like, especially when you're talking about, like, YouTube. Let's take, for example, like, I think media, right? Maybe people don't know there, but, you know, initially they yeah. started with a small group of people, right? Doing tech review. And just for a certain type of creator. And then it expanded to where now they're in this huge ecosystem where it's like they're no longer serving a real estate agent. They're no longer serving, you know, a pool, a pool company. Like now they're just a whole ecosystem. So it now opens up the field for somebody to come in and say, well, think media is not going to serve real estates. They, they may serve it abroad, but I can come in here now and serve that real estate market and serve that that void where it's like, I'm no longer, I'm not competing with Think Media, but I'm actually a companion to them because I'm able to serve mm -hmm. a certain pool of people that they can't serve. So I always believe small and, and, and small is like, for me, it's like one person, dial into that one person. And once you find that one person, you literally can duplicate them over and over again until you build a massive audience and then you can branch out and build other products and serve other communities and serve other industries. But uh, for me, niche is always going to be down, up, um, as opposed to big and then go small. Yeah, uh, it's 100%. And it's it's a good thing that you, ha you don't have that many viewers or subscribers when you first start because you're going you're gonna to screw up. You know, mm -hmm. you, it's like we, Jim and I will go back to our first time we did a show and it's, man, it's cringy. <laughs> You know, it, it's bad, man. And, and it's like the first time you did a podcast and how many times you said, uh, you know, whatever. And you, so we do that because it's like, okay, look where we're at now. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, and how we grew. And back then there wasn't, there wasn't that many people watching or listening. Right. And they, they, they may go back to that. That's okay. You know, we're not going to, we're not going to take that stuff down, but it's good right that you start small because you need to get the reps in, right? You got, mm -hmm. you got to get used to doing what you're doing. You can't just yep. show up with, uh, with the road pod mic and, uh, the, the amazing background and, yeah. uh, you know, the TS4 hub that you just all brought right. on Amazon, oh, yeah. all the stuff we have loaded in the carousel. Yeah, yeah. And you notice Amazon, I'm, I mentioned that. I'm, um, but you, you know, you don't, you don't wake up like that. You got, you have right. to, you have to get in and go and put in a rep and, you know, you don't mm -hmm. go to the gym and come back shredded, you know, you right. gotta, you gotta, you know, gotta be consistent and, and do that. So it's actually a good thing that when you yep. start out, you know, if we started out and all of a sudden we had, you know, we woke up and we had 5,000 subscribers on our YouTube channel, we wouldn't be ready. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. And it wasn't meant to be. You know, so let's just, let's just roll with what we got, man. I, I love this. Yeah. And it's, it's, the thing is like, in the beginning, you're doing, you're focusing on quantity because you're learning, just like you said, right? And then mm. as you progress where you guys are now, it's quality because you focus on growth. Um, so, and, you know, there's always a conversation of like, you can, you can do both, but in the beginning, it's super encouraged to do quantity. Um, so that way you like you said, just get those road, those rump bumps out the way. I think uh, the other day I, I was spending time just, uh, again, just looking through all the videos that I've created on my channel and, and really trying to understand like, where are people dropping off? Where do I lose people's mm -hmm. interest? What are the things that I can do? And I, and it had to go through those moments where it's like, oh, this is like a video three years ago. It's very like, I can't watch it, um, <laughs> but I need to, but I need to like look yeah. at it. 
Um, but it's it's a great, at the same time, you feel embarrassed from looking at it, but it also it kind of makes you feel to where it's like, wow, like when I was in that stage, I didn't believe that I can get where I am now, right? I didn't have the yeah. confidence that I have now. So That's you can it. also leverage that. And a lot of times I use it as a tool. Like when somebody joins my email list, like the first email that I give them, it's like, go and check out the first video that I made. As embarrassing as it is, go look at this first video that I made where I didn't know anything. I just decided to turn the camera on. Like I'm, I'm so blown out. Like there's this, um, just like so much brightness, the lights have a big window. Like it's, it's crazy. <laughs> um, but if I didn't start that and I didn't press record and I didn't feel confident to say like, I got something to share. I wouldn't be here with you guys here today. And I believe that a lot of people don't start because they have a, either imposter syndrome or they feel that they're not perfect enough. When at the end of the day, it's like, if you got a message to share, share it. As you, as you share it, you'll develop it and, and people will start to gravitate towards it. And then you'll start to see that like your shakes of being on camera and feeling comfortable um, will start to dissipate because like it just becomes natural. Um, so yeah, I, I am 100% in agreement with you of just like, you just got to start. Yeah. Yeah, this, I mean, this has been amazing. I mean, just, and, and I love how you, you talk about that too. Cause like when I've done digital marketing, you know, classes for small businesses, right? You, you kind of ask that question, who's your, who's your target audience and say everybody, well, if it's everybody, it's nobody, right. right? It's got to be right. somebody specific in mind. And you say, well, now wait a minute. Right. You no, know, it's like, is, is a guy going to buy the product you're selling? No. Okay. Well now we've eliminated guys. Then you start right. getting into, you know, is it okay? It's women. Well, what age are they? Oh, so let's focus on that. Right. And, right. and not try to like, Oh, I got to get all these followers and subscribers and, you know, the, the vanity metrics. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. Pat, Pat Flynn is amazing. You yep. know, super fans and just that whole mindset it applies everywhere, right? It applies to gaming. It applies to business. And I think, uh, I think the biggest thing and, and Chris and I have both run into this and, and I would like to hear if you've seen this as well is well, one of these people like, well, I post this stuff on LinkedIn, but nobody ever engages with me. And then we ask the question, mm. do you engage on other people's content? Well, I don't have time for that. Yeah. Well, Thank you. then why should they have time for you? I mean, mm -hmm. what it, have you seen that as well? With like, whether it's working with gamers or, you know, they're it, just like, I don't got time to talk to these people or. It's, it's probably very, like you see it a lot. Um, and that's where it's like the biggest focus for me is a mindset shift where it's like, it's just all about them. And I think that's the, that's the thing where it's like, they'll, they'll post on Twitter. They'll, they'll post on Instagram and it's just like, follow me, come check out my stream. Uh, look here. Or they'll like pop into somebody's stream just to get them to follow back. Um, so, and that's the disconnect where it's like, um, a long time ago, I think Gary V dropped a video maybe several years ago, like 2015 or 16, called the dollar 80 strategy. And um, to this day, I, I leverage that, um, you know, because what it is is that is you spend, you know, one, you spend, you get a, you get 18. It was like initially it was like for Instagram, you would get 18 hashtags. Uh, you would go ahead and spend one minute and you would click on each hashtag, find find three people that kind of are in the same space as you or resonate with you, and you would leave a genuine comment. And you would do that on three of their posts. And if you do that every single day and, and you did that, you would naturally just build people curious to be able to check you out and want to go from there. Um, so I do that now. Um, and I believe that that's where the disconnect is at. It's like, okay, how can I, like you said, how can I expect people to want to exchange their time, something that they did never get back to engage in my, in my, in, in my com in content. But other than that, I won't spend time doing, doing that for others. Um, so, and that's where relationships comes in hand. And I think that when you give without having expectations, um, which is very rare in the gaming space, there's always something that you're giving, hoping to receive, whether that be a like, a subscribe, a retweet, uh, you know, a shout out. There's a lot of that. Um, and I think we're just now in the gaming space getting past the follow for follow or shout out for shout out. Mm. You still see it around, but um, it's, it's just it's just a, a it's just a huge disconnect. Um, and I believe that there's not enough education around like the key is to build relationships, get to yeah. know other people, build connections, get co collaborate with other people. And I, I believe that a lot of gamers they try to go at it alone. And this was me as well. Um, until I, mm. I felt like, I was like, you know what? I need, I can't go out this journey alone. 
Like I need to either mastermind with people. I need to talk to certain people. I need to get connected with. I need to look around because I know that there's certain things that it's like, if I'm constantly just doing this on my own, I'm not going to grow because I'm going to constantly look at things from my lens as opposed to getting outside experience that, that, that we need. But yeah, especially for the gamers, it's something you see every day. They just post and ask why I'm not getting engagement. Uh, why are people not engaging? Well, one, you're not spending time engaging with other people, but you're also not studying what the people who are getting engagement are doing. Um, and yeah. that's something that it's, it's a balance where like there's moments in my day where like I'm just browsing social media casually. Right. Mm. Um, but there's times in my day that I'm just like, I'm browsing social media with intentionality. Right. I'm like, why, why did I, why did this thumbnail stop me? Why, why did this title yeah. capture my attention? Right. Yeah. Uh, what did they say in the first three seconds? Like, how did that capture my attention? Um, why am I scrolling Instagram and like, why did I stop that? Why did I share it? Why did I comment? Right. And I look at those, those, those kind of like viewer signals of like, who am I? Like, I'm probably my perfect target audience. So how am I engaging with social media? How am I engaging with content? And when we can look at that and be intentional with like leveraging social media, because it can consume you, right? You can go through the endless scroll of social media, but when you flip your mind and it's almost like once you see it, you can't unsee it. Like, it's just like, once you start analyzing content, you just start analyzing and you start looking at it, it's like, oh, wow. Like, that's why that made me laugh. Um, that's why it made me emotional. That's where it brought me to there. So I think that sometimes we're so focused on creating new content that we forget to analyze the tons of content that's being produced every single day and yeah. analyzing to see like, why is that working? Why are people yeah. responding to that? Why, instead of saying like, oh, wow, that's the most craziest video. Why did that get a million views? Study it. Why, mm -hmm. right? Why did it get a million views? Ask that question. Instead of trying to bring hate down or saying like, that person yeah. doesn't deserve it, right? But mm -hmm. obviously what they created resonated with a lot of people yes. and it hit, it hit somewhere where like they felt to share it, to comment, to like it, regardless of how silly it was. Um, and I think we discredit that, that we can leverage other creators in our space and other spaces and learn from their content and their successes, because they're also going to have content that flops. Why did that flop? Oh, wow. Mm. Like what they're doing in that video is what I do in almost all my videos. <laughs> no wonder I get no likes, no shares and no comments. <laughs> right. So it's <laughs> like, so you gotta have that self-awareness to look at your own content and yeah. be okay with like understanding like, Hey, what you created didn't hit the mark. It's okay. Right. But now analyzing other people's content, you try one new thing. Hey, instead of me doing this in the beginning of my video, I'm going to do this. Um, and may, Hey, I never asked a question in my content or asked the audience to give me their opinion. Maybe I should try that and I'll get more comments. So, um, I, I've just been now in this phase of like, just trying to be a, a better understanding of how the the audience reacts. Um, and I believe that that's the key. I haven't unlocked it, um, but it's definitely been something that's been true to the top of my mind of like, you know, I'm growing, but like, could I grow more if I understood who it was that's, that's watching the content? Could I grow more if I knew that um, certain things that I say in my videos actually get people to go away, right? Um, and then I can remove those things. And then not only do I become a better communicator and a better creator of content, but I'm also giving a better experience to the viewer on the other end to be able to enjoy the content better because I'm taking the time to realize when they're telling me they jumped off this video, uh, they didn't, they disliked it, they didn't comment, they watched one video and left, they didn't watch multiple videos. Um, so I think that we just need to be a student and study content, um, yeah. not just engaging with other people, but studying how they're producing content and 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 learning from the successes and the failures. So, yeah. That's am it. I mean, it's curiosity, right? And it's, right. It, it's at the core of, of being a lifelong learner. And, and <laughs> it's like, I think to your earlier point, how many times do you look at something and just, and you immediately, I don't want to use the word hate, but you immediately just kind of <laughs> put shade on it and just kind of like, right. why, why does this, you know? And you just sort of like, Cause you're, you're thinking, well, I would never do that instead of going, mm -hmm. is there something that's being done here? You know, and that doesn't mm -hmm. mean like if somebody's doing some silly dance on TikTok that you got to start dancing, right. silly. but is there something in the way they're editing it? Is there something right. is the, in the sound? Is it being delivered in a certain way that mm -hmm. maybe you can take and add to something that you're already doing, not changing your, 
you know, your, you know, things completely, but if it's right. going to add to your arsenal in terms of your, your ability to serve your, uh, your community, why not be curious about it? And to your point, test right. it out. I mean, that's the right. great thing is there's really no rules mm-hmm. to this stuff, right? Yeah, man. It's, if the, the biggest secret that I've ever learned is that, especially when it comes to social media, nobody is watching your content specifically all the time. So mm. because you posted something today doesn't mean you need to create something new tomorrow. Take what you created mm-hmm. yesterday and post it again tomorrow, right? Um, and sometimes it, that's, that's what it takes to get the right people to be able to see it. So we build this catalog of content um, that we're just always on this hamster wheel of like, we got to create something new. No, how can I take what I created last year, repurpose yes. it, bring it back to light, shape it in a different way and put it out there. Um, right. And, uh, one of the biggest things that, um, that, um, that I'm seeing a, a trend and a, and a shift in YouTube is that it is swapped. Long form content is going towards more home based, not search based titles and shorts. There's a huge opportunity for education channels where shorts are going more search based, right? So using search based mm-hmm. titles and shorts and using more humanized titles in, in long form. So you start looking at those, at those, at those shifts in there where it's like, okay, how do I get maximum visibility? It's like, people want to learn something, but you got to think about, again, viewer signals. How are people consuming content? When you're, you're, when you get on YouTube or any social media platform, you're not, how often do you use the search, the search bar unless you're actually trying to seek an answer? Most of the time you're scrolling and the, the, the platforms know you well enough based on your activity and how you interact with the platform to try to feed you something you're going to enjoy. So when we start thinking of our content of like, okay, I'm going to make this, this piece of content, but how can I interrupt that person on the other side and get them interested to want to click? Um, and just recently, I think maybe like four or five days ago, um, I came to this, this kind of realization of like the ADA principle that's used for sales copy and writing, right? Attention, interest, desire, action. Um, it's something that's, that's, that's proven to work, right? It's a great way to be able to get people to want to take action. So. Um, for me, my new experiment is to use that principle in scripting videos, right? Of like, okay, mm. how can I grab attention? Well, that's my thumbnails and that's my titles, right? I need to capture their attention, right? Not just on like a how-to type of thing, but like, how can I showcase in this thumbnail and this title that they're going to be interested in, in what it is? Like, really capture attention. I know what you want. And then as soon as the video starts, getting their interest, getting them interested into the content, not by saying, hey, my name is Last Curry, welcome right. back, uh, you know, here's my brand. No, how can I instantly get them interested and then desire to want to watch the rest of the video? And then once I get them to desire the video, then to get them to take action on what it is that I want them, whether that be teaching them how to set something up or just to take action on listening to this story. And, and it's just like, so for me, that's kind of like my new experiment of uh, really leveraging that to really get me thinking about like, before I even create a video, I need to think about my packaging, right? Because at mm-hmm. the end of the day, it doesn't matter how good my video is going to be if I can't even paint the picture and, and, and give them interested enough to even click, right? Um, so a lot of times, you know, and, and the, like I said, I'm not saying this is something I've been doing forever. This is something I'm just learning as I go through this journey, right? Because I've been on the other side of it where I just create because I'm like, the more videos I get out, the more views I'm going to get. Uh, you know, just need to create, just create, 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 and not thinking about anything and not adapting to consumer behavior and how they were interacting with the platform, right? YouTube used to be heavy search. People still will search, right? Um, but you also think about the viewing behavior. I look at myself, I get on YouTube and I just scroll and I'm like, oh, yeah. wow, watch that, watch that. So guess what? That's on the home feed. That means that I'm not actually looking for that. But that person who created that content and YouTube understands the things that I'm interested in and the season that I'm in, right? To be able to say, you're interested in that. So now that's where my focus has shifted to really take the time to really spend on. All I want to do is to improve my ability. And that's that's the one thing I want to work on my videos is just thumbnails, titles, and hook. How can I improve those even marginally? Just, Just getting people to the 30 second mark at about 70%. How can I do that? How can I get more people to click? And then naturally, I can then progress through the video and start improving it to give my viewers a better a better experience. So um, yeah, I just think that it's like when we spend time focusing on like, why does this piece of content matter to the person that I'm trying to serve? Why would they watch it? Mm. Um, and you have to be also look at your own content with like your own eyes and, and, and look at it. You, like 
you know, your content is not always going to be the great, the greatest, right? I always think of us like, like me looking at my content is like my mom looking at my content, right? It's like, oh, it's great. <laughs> awesome. Right. It's like, you, there's, there's no wrong you can gold do. Star. Right. Right. The gold <laughs> star. And, um, and we have to look at that and say, like, let me take a step back and look at this. Would I share this? Would I comment on it? Would, mm. would I go ahead and watch this all the way through? Right. Um, and a lot of times we don't think like that. Um, but it, it really changes you and how you approach content creation, how you approach, uh, like building a community and building a business when you truly, truly try to do everything in your power to understand that other person that's trying to watch that piece of content. And naturally, once you understand them better, your hooks improve, your, your storytelling improves, the, the things, and they naturally just progress through your journey of like, man, like this person gets me. I want to check out more of their content. I want to subscribe. Yeah. Oh, what do they have? What are they offering? Oh, they do coaching. Oh, they, oh, they have this or they, like, and I think we forget that there's, it's just like, we go straight to selling and it's like, let's, let's first understand like, what's the messaging that's going to work best. Um, and I think that now, and I, I know I'm going crazy long with this, but, um, the biggest thing now is like, if you make content for like Instagram or shorts or, you know, TikTok and organically it gets in a lot of engagement, it's primed for ads, right? Um, mm. So it becomes a testing ground to be able to understand where it's like, instead of you spending hundreds of dollars on running advertising on uh, content that you haven't proven, if it does well organically and people are naturally engaging with it and commenting and sharing it, just imagine what, you, what the amplification you can do to it once you put it in front of an ad. You've already tested it. It already works. Um, so again, it, it, but you can't get there if you don't understand who the viewer is and who that audience you're trying to serve, because you'll never connect that message that's going to hit home and get them to take that next step. So um, it's, it's ever evolving, but I realize now that it's, it's not about me and it's not about what I want to create. And it's about who that person is. Um, and that was a hard pill to swallow um, because, you know, I thought I knew it all. Um, I thought, I thought I knew exactly what was needed. Um, and what I thought they needed was completely wrong. Um, and, and it saved me a lot of time. I spent, I wasted a lot of time trying to create something that I thought was needed. Um, and then the minute that I started to listen, it just made the process a lot easier. There was no like pushback. It was like, wow, I needed this. I'm like, yeah, I've been listening. Um, so it's just, it's just a great opportunity to just spend more time with your audience and learn who they are. Yeah. And, and when you're doing this short form video, right? These shorts mm -hmm. that are a minute or less. And I know Chris and I, and Chris is, you know, been doing a really good job and I'm, I'm trying to get as, as good as, as him, but I know I never will because I'm perfectionist. But that whole point of, right, nobody cares who you are. Get to the point. Mm -hmm. If they want to know who you are, if your content captures them, they're going to go check you out. Then they can right. go find that, the, like the mm -hmm. intro video on your channel where you talk about who you are instead of like feeling like, oh, I got to, I got to say who I am in the first 10 seconds of the 60 or 59 seconds that I have. Right. And by the right. like, oh, I don't get and, time. And, and, and really the sweet spot is like 34 seconds, right? So, yeah. so it's like, if, if you can, um, and, and I believe that it's like, it all based on the, the type of content you're making, right? Is, the, is, is this piece of content you're creating meant the goal for discovery? Is it meant for community or is it meant for sales? And I think that once you establish the goals of that piece of content, it makes it easy to understand like the, like how you approach it and how you do it. If it's a discoverable piece of content, you really, it's for people who don't know you. So you really want to make a good impression. So you really want to make sure like it's highly edited. It dives right into the content. But when you go to something more of a community piece, you can be a little bit more laid back because these are transparent moments. This is where you're trying, these people know you and now they just want to get to know you deeper. And then same thing for sales, right? It, it, they're so, I think there's different levels of pieces of content and each piece of content needs to have a goal. And then it makes creating the content a lot easier because you have that in mind. Like, oh, okay, this is not really going to get a lot of views, but it's really going to get people to understand what we're about here at Dealcasters, right? Um, or like, hey, this is not going to get a lot of views, but it's really going to get people to want to head and, and work with us to do, to do their remote production and to get them to know us. So we're not worried about getting millions of followers, but this video right here is focused on getting us seen by five, 10,000 people because we want to start that new journey again with that new person. So... Um, I think that's a big component of it, of understanding like what's the actual goal of the individual content. But yeah, it's uh, you can't you can't really be sharing like who you are because people don't want to know right. that unless that's the goal of that piece of content. And that's the the crazy yeah. thing too is is you know 
you know, you mentioned we're remote producers and you mm-hmm. know, the, the whole reason why we did this show was because we wanted to display that we were remote producers and then mm-hmm. it kind of, you know, turned into this, this thing. But the day I got a call from a now client and he said, nice. uh, ep- the episode you did, it was episode 38. It was with Kirk Nugent. You guys did this and you pulled in this. Mm-hmm. I want that. How much? Yep. that's when it clicked for me. That's mm-hmm. when I was like, I wasn't even like, that wasn't even the intention. Like it yeah. was just like, okay, we're having uh, this, uh, you know, Kirk Nugent and, and I know you've been on his show and, yeah. and we're going to do this, you know, whatever. We're going to have a conversation. Hopefully yeah. it's going to serve our audience and boom, I get a client out of it. And yep. that's, that's what I think people don't realize. It's like, you don't necessarily have to hard sell. You mm-hmm. just have to show up and serve. And that's what yep. you, sir, are doing. And uh, for those yes. that are still hanging out, you're welcome. Yeah. Um, um, and uh, you can enjoy a lot more of Last Curry. Uh, there's his, uh, his link on the screen. Uh, please go to lastcurry.com slash links and you can connect. I've never seen so many places to be, to connect with anyone. Um, oh, but, uh, you can follow him on all Jake. of the tubes. <laughs> I thought yeah. we had all the tubes. You have more yeah. tubes than we do. He's got more tubes, more tubes for us to Dang. explore. Yes. You know, exactly. and we're going to add rumble soon. So, okay. Oh, all right. Yeah. yeah. You can go yeah. live streaming on rumble as well. I yeah. Think, right? Yeah. I think, I think it's a, it's a platform to kind of keep on the radar. Um, mm-hmm. I think it's still, I think it's uh in the early stages of like, where YouTube was back in 2016. I think it's not really developed yet. Yeah. Um, but it, I think it is It is a, a platform to just keep your eye on and and maybe spend some time reproducing content that you post elsewhere on there. Um, there could be an audience for you. Awesome. Well, Anthony, can I call you? I, I feel like I, it was like, yeah. I only know you as Last Curry. By last, yeah. I yeah. mean, any. It's all, it's all part of my name. I think, I think they, they all work. So if you want to call me Anthony, you want to call me Santana, you want to call me Lance Curry, all of them work, man. Just, um, you just guys don't are my call brothers. late for dinner. Yeah. That's it, right? Late for dinner. I'll never be late for dinner, okay? That's probably the one meal I'm always early for. Yeah, um, man. Thank you so much for man yeah. delivering so much value to this audience, man. Um, just incredible stuff and uh, an amazing story that you shared as well the the whole origin story of of you know saved by the xbox or, yeah or, well not saved by the xbox <laughs> yeah. but saved yeah you know xbox. you know what i mean yeah. but uh and everything about it and certainly you've made some fans here nancy cyrus and, nice. and others uh as well so we appreciate you being here man thank you so much man it's, it's been an honor uh this has been something i've been wanting to be a part with you guys and collaborate with you guys so much Likewise. um thank you for like expanding my mind just from your questions and the things you really made me think deeper even about the things that i'm doing um and i think that's where collaboration comes ahead so it's been an honor um and thank i'm just you, so grateful for this opportunity yeah. All right, you. man. Thank you. And for everyone else, don't fear the gear. Man. Thanks for listening to Dealcasters. Congratulations. You've taken another step forward in your content creation journey. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe or follow button here in your favorite podcast player so you can be reminded every time we drop an episode. We love hearing from our listeners and viewers. And if you're wanting to watch our shows live on Amazon, feel free to follow Dealcasters Live as well at dealcasters.live. Follow us on Twitter or subscribe to our YouTube channel where we also include added content that you cannot find anywhere else. If you have questions about this episode or have something you want us to review, you can also email us at dealcasters at dealcasters.live. Thanks again for listening, and you know the deal. Don't fear the gear.